Today I want to kind of show you how you can take an eye like this where someone might have a little bit of a lazy eye and um, make it more like the other eye like that. Um, I have a lot of his face blacked out to protect somewhat the identity of my my uh, person in the picture. Um, now this won't work for every situation you have. For example, if both eyes are closed or well, any if any of the eyes are closed completely, this method will not work. Also, if both eyes are kind of um, somewhat closed, um, this also probably won't work. This only works if one eye is lazy and the other one is, is pretty much perfect because <clears throat> you will be using parts of the eye of the good eye on the bad eye. Um, now if you have a situation where both eyes are closed or both eyes are half closed the only way you can save those is if you take the eyes from another photo in which the person is in an almost identical position in almost identical lighting and then you might be able to fix the photo. But in this case, like I said, this only works if you have one good eye and one partially closed eye like this. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we I'm going to go ahead and um, merge a duplicate of of all of my layers here and I'm going to do that by doing shift control alt E that will give me a layer here to work with and then we're gonna go up to oh you probably can't see it on my screen here but we're gonna go to the filter at the top of the screen and then choose liquify We're going to zoom up so you have a good view of your picture here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go down here and click show mask. And then you're going to use this freeze mask tool. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to mask off the crease of the eyelid. And try to keep it to just the crease no lower because you need to work with that eyelid just about like that and I like to go ahead and mask off a good part of the eyebrow as well because I don't want to move any of that and also you're going to mask off this lower lid line because I don't want to move any of the lower line here just under the eyelashes and I'm also gonna mask off a good part underneath because I don't want to move any of his face under there either so basically your um, your eye should look like this after you have the mask on it now so I can see what we're going to do, I'm going to go over here and unclick show mask so you can't see it anymore. And then we're going to go up to your actual forward warp tool. Now the size of your brush, you want it to be about so about as wide as the entire eye so you can fit the entire eye and center that in there. And then we're just going to push the entire thing up. So that it fits in there. Now you may need to lower in and fix parts of it if it looks a little weird. Like right there, I think that needs pushed up just a little bit. Now of course that's going to make your pupil look awful and we're going to fix that later. But right now, just so that that pupil doesn't get in our way, we're going to kind of push it over. 
and it's going to look even weirder. So I apologize for that. But as you can see, if you click the preview on and off, that really opens the eye itself. And now we're going to click OK. So the next thing we need to do to make this eye look kind of normal, um, let me see what I've got here. OK, so the next thing we have to do is we need to go up to our selection tool and click the elliptical marquee tool. And we want to draw a circle a little bit wider than the pupil on the good eye. It doesn't have to be that wide, but I did just to give me some wiggle room. Right click and click layer via copy. That makes us another layer of a copy of that pupil. Now we're going to use our move tool and move that pupil over to approximately where we need. Then add a layer mask to it. Click your paintbrush tool and make sure your black is selected and you're at full opacity. Then we're just going to go ahead and mask off all the surrounding parts of that pupil. You don't have to be quite perfect at this point, but you want to basically have all parts of your eye here showing here. And then um, now what I like to do after kind of doing that is move the pupil around so that it kind of lines up with where the other pupil was. And sometimes, well, let me go ahead and mask on part of that pupil where I accidentally erased it. That's about the position I want. Um, but sometimes that pupil can be a little bit big because you can see his face is on an angle. So I usually do control T and that will allow me to change the size of the pupil. I hold shift to keep the, the um, constrain the proportions and just shrink it down ever so slightly and click enter. I'm going to reposition that eye. Once again, and I feel like that's about the right size, but I still need to mess around with that mask a little bit. You just go back and forth between your black and white brushes. just to make sure whoops just to make sure everything's where it's supposed to be that's about right so the next thing I did on my eye was it needs to be darkened for that side of the face it's a little bit more in shadow so having the pupil as light as it is isn't going to be very natural looking so I'm going to go down here and add a curves adjustment layer and add a clipping mask so it only affects the pupil. I'm going to drag the middle of my curve down just a little bit so the eye is darkened ever so little. And that's about right. And then the last thing I did was I added a dodge and burn layer. So I'm just going to add a new layer, set the blending mode to soft light, go over to my brush, make sure it is on white. My flow will be on 2% because I don't want to work with too high of a percentage. And then you can see right here, you just 
I don't like where that lands right there. And what I might do, let's see here. Actually, what I want to do is I want to do go ahead and do another merge copy layer. Um, so I will go ahead and do Shift Control Alt E. Go up to Filter Liquify. I feel like the edge of this pupil here is a little bit off, so. I'm going to move it out ever so slightly and maybe that edge in just a tiny bit. There we go. And click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and group my layers here. Um, the only thing I might do a little bit different actually is I might add another dodge burn layer. Um, That eyelid is a little bit bright for um, for being so far back in, so I might go ahead and use my black brush to kind of darken this edge up just ever so slightly. Not a lot, but... there. And there you have it. You have an eye that's more open.